Hi, this is Deanna Kosaraju, founder of Global Tech Women. Welcome again to T Voices 2015. This is version 3.0, the third year of our annual conference celebrating the accomplishments of women in technology around the world, the week of International Women's Day. So I'm really excited about this session because I want to learn more about what's going on in Peru. And building a women in technology community in an emerging country is the topic of this session with Stephanie Frias, who's uh, the founder, I believe, of Women in Technology in Peru. And she's going to tell us about what's going on there and share some of her best practices. So if you're thinking about starting a women in technology group in your region of the world, uh, Stephanie will provide some insight into how to go about doing that. So a couple of things. Um, I'm going to put a PowerPoint online here, so you can drag and drop that PowerPoint anywhere you want on the window. And then also, I'll just go ahead and do that right now. Maybe. Just thinking about it. There we go. And so she has 23 slides here. So she's going to let us know what slide number she's on so that we can follow along with her. We have to advance the slides ourselves. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to Stephanie, and I look forward to your talk. If you need anything, I'll be here in the background. Just call out, and I'll, I'll be here. Okay. Thanks, Dina. Um, so uh, as Dina mentioned, I will be talking about building a women in technology community in an emerging country. So in this case, um, it's true. And uh, if we go to slide two, uh, you will have a small bio on myself. And um, my name is Stephanie Frias. And I study software engineering at UPC, which is a local university. So I started as a web developer. And just by lucky coincidence, I fall to the aut uh, automation engineering. And that's where I became passionate about uh, software quality assurance. And well, I program for fun on pet projects, so I'm a hobbyist program programmer, if you want to, to call it that way. Um, and above all, I'm the co-founder and president of Women in Technolo Technology Peru. Uh, I will be talking about uh, this organization in the following slides. And well, there's my Twitter handle and my about.me page. And so let's start this story by going back in time three years from now. Uh, if we go to slide three, uh, you will see how I felt three years ago being a female in a tech field. So I didn't see that much female presence in the field. And just to give you a small example, I would think twice before going to a tech event because I would be terrified to be the one woman attending. So that got me thinking about the situation and pushed me to ask uh, for my female for my male friends if they knew about any any female that would, would like to go to, to some events or if they are uh, very into tech stuff and so that's how I started looking for more females in, in the field. And we started uh, conversations about the situation. And we finally agreed to meet. Um, and that's what happened on uh, 2013. If you go to slide four, uh, you can see the shot of the very first meeting of Women in Technology Peru. Uh, so this, this was a small uh, group, but it was great. Uh, we sat together and we shared experience, ideas. And the most important thing is that we share a common dream to be a community for us, women in technology. So we left with multiple ideas, but no money to execute them. So the solution uh, we came up with was to seek for grants. And that's how we found about the Anita Work Institute that you can see on slide five. Uh, well, you can see there uh, some pictures of the project Reaching Out Peru. So this project received the funding from the Pass It On grant 
that it's uh, hosted by the Anita Borghi Institute. Uh, the project was to have a two-day workshop with 40 girls at a local school deep into the countryside of Cajamarca. So we taught them about HTML, business modeling, and the girls in groups, they came up with an idea which they structured um, as a running business and the goal was to build a website for it. So it was a great idea, but also was a very awakening one. Uh, since we were like far, far, far away from the capital, internet was our biggest problem. So we had to think about offline resources and also offline tools. Uh, we even had to use our cell phones to have some internet so we can pu publish their website. Um, after this experience in the countryside of Peru, uh, we were sure that we could work around any obstacles in our road to build a woman in technology community. So when we went back to Lima, we started planning for the next events to run locally. And that's how, um, on a slide six, uh, we organized a couple of Rails girls. So uh, we got the help from the local community of Rural Peru. And the greatest outcome of these events uh, was that we realized that there were a lot of girls interested in learning how to program. So we started planning bigger. And for that, we needed partnerships and sponsors. And that's how uh, in 2004, if you go to slide seven, uh, we partnered uh, with the GDG Open Lima community to co-organize the Women Tech Makers Lima of 2014. So this, this was a one day event with more than 300 people attending, most of them women. And the greatest theme of this event was the program. So most of the speakers were females. And it was, this was, this is very uncommon here in, in Lima and in Peru. Um, and also we got uh, some great deal sponsors like Intel and Verizon Terramark. And with this experience of partnership and having a sponsor, we then reach out to the Python Software Foundation on slide eight. So uh, we applied for the uh, grant by Python Software Foundation, and we got some funding to, to grow up by canteens. Uh, this was a full day event uh, where we introduced uh, 25 teenagers into the programming world through Python. Uh, so we partner with local coaches and run this successfully. Uh, this great experience uh, gave us enough confidence to work with teens in Lima. And the next challenge would be the God Rise for Girls. On slide nine, you can see our, our graduates from the program. So um, God Rise for Girls was an eight-week program for 16 girls. And the goal was to teach them about web development, business modeling among some more tech topics, and also provide them with soft skills like leadership, teamwork, presentation skills. And this was achieving uh, by including two sessions of coaching with uh, a couple of specialists on the field. And well, that that is just a, a showcase of a few events we have organized in the past two years. And with that, uh, I want to start sharing the lessons learned as an organization. And the first one would be on the slide um, 11. Uh, building a portfolio of small events. So small events give you the opportunity to actually learn how to organize events and all the stress and all the chaos that it involves. Also, um, it gives you the opportunity to be part of the team and also to create a team of people that you can trust. And 
also um, the goal is to prove that you actually have an audience for the events that you want to, to organize. And with that, uh, I want to complement this with the second lesson in slide 12. It's a uh, seek for allies. So you need a team, you need people you can trust, uh, you need people that you can share your philosophy and most important, I have a shared vision of where you where you want to go, what things you want to achieve. And this is um, this has been very important. And once you have the team, you need the money. So if we go to slide 13, uh, you can see um, the funding that we have received and the grants we have applied. We have applied for the Anita Work Institute, the Python Software Foundation, and BJF. Um, so uh, at first, we have reached uh, for funding uh, uh, for international uh, organizations. And once we got the money, we needed the venue. So on a slide 14, uh, you will see some venues that has helped us uh, hosting events. So on the bottom, you can see some local universities. And then you can see uh, co-working spaces and some offices. So they haven't uh, sponsored us with money, but they have provided a uh, space for our, our events for free. So the lesson here is that you can help you can get help from your professors or even your current employer. So um, you will also need some local sponsors, as you can see on slide 15. So um, there are listed uh, some of our current sponsors and as well as some that we have worked in the past. Um, even though the, most of the events we organize are for free, and if you want to host events for free, or well, free events, I mean, uh, you have to bear in mind our lesson in slide 16. So everything has a cost. If you want to, to publish a website or to have a website, you have to have in mind the cost of hosting the, the domain. And if you want to have like an awesome design, like we have found for us, uh, you have to think about uh, a designer. If you want your attendees to be provided with food, you have to budget for that. Also, uh, you want to budget for materials. That, that is uh, printable handouts, sticky notes, pen, pencil. So you have to bear in mind that every little thing will have a cost. And if we go to the slide 17, um, this has been a great deal for us, uh, making friends with your local tech communities. So from the very beginning, we have been receiving help from Rui Peru and Ayar Peru. So if you want to organize and throw uh, an event, you don't have to be the expert on that particular field or topic but you do have to know some experts so you can invite them and have them presenting and having people interest on that topic. And well, the second lesson, it's um, really important, at least for us, the non-English speakers. So on um, slide 18, be prepared to translate everything you can. So do not assume that people is familiar with English. Uh, because we use like terms and a slang that it is very common for us in English, but there are people who will struggle to try to keep in up with those terms. And also they want to keep up with the session or the, the topic that you are presented. So, so you want to ease that pain. You want to translate the materials or have synonyms or to have metaphors to explain something on your uh, on your reality. And well, just a small example for the Royal Girls, we had to translate the whole guide to Spanish. 
so the girls uh, would be able to follow up with the session. Um, next lesson has been uh, one of the most important for us. So uh, let's go to slide 19. Uh, networking. Um, at first, it was kind of difficult for us, but if we wanted to grow and to share our vision, we had to go out there. You know, we have to go and, and tell about those, our story, our goals, and just to, to have volunteers, to have partnerships. So we started uh, having a presence in local events. We have presented in different uh, international conferences, and we have even reached out to mentors in this field. So I would say that networking has been a key tool for us to grow as an organization. And the final lesson I want to share, it's um, on slide 20, is that uh, we are all role models. As co-founders of Women in Technology Peru, uh, we know that girls are looking up to us. So if we are ask them to present in front of the crowd, to collaborate with others, and to go beyond the comfort zone, we have to do it ourselves first. We do not only organize events, but also we present, we coach, and we network, so our community keeps on growing. And just to have a visual summary of the lessons I have mentioned, uh, you, you can go to a slide 21 and have there the list of the things that I've just mentioned. Uh, well, and this is has this lesson has been very uh, very important for us for our growth as a community for women in technology. Uh, and I invite you to slide 22 to give you a little bit more detail on women in technology Peru. So, uh, women in technology. Uh, is a running organization with more than two years of experience. So um, we are based in, in Lima and we are seeking for opportunities to go beyond Lima as we have done in the past. Uh, we have hosted a, a little bit more than 15 events. Um, we have uh, gathered more than uh, 400 attendees among these events. And besides that, uh, just to keep on this, uh, this continuity of events, we host a monthly meeting uh, so we can create a space for women to present and to share ideas, uh, to share knowledge and to, to share plans and to include them in the organization. So there are a lot of volunteers that come up uh, and reach to us. So we, we are able to, to organize more, more events and, and to have more women coming into technology. Um, and well, that's uh, our mission. Um, you can see uh, some, well, not some, but most of the things we have done it during these two years in our fan page. Um, you can follow us on Twitter and you can visit our our website to look into more details the, of the projects that, that we have run. And I want to to finish with uh, with this phrase that I really like on slide 23, and it's something that I would definitely take out as an experience of building a women technology community. Uh, so. It is, not, it is not going to be easy, but it's going to be totally worth it. I mean, if you, if you really want to, to build a community, uh, you have to take into account that it is going to be like a great effort, but it's going to be very rewarding. Uh, you will see uh, changes on people that go frequently to your gatherings you will see a change in yourself because uh, as you get more information, you are able to do and to achieve more things. Um, 
So um, I'm I'm closing up my presentation and I will open it up to questions now. Thanks. Thank you, Stephanie. That was a great presentation. Um, at this point, uh, we don't have any questions, but um, I have one question for you. Um, I'm hoping that uh, as you move forward with Women in Technology Peru, that you will consider partnering with Global Tech Women. And if we can find ways to stream your events, um, we would love to do that. And also, we will definitely um, publicize your events in our newsletter and on our Facebook group as well because we would love to watch your growth. And if there's anything that we can do to help, um, we would love to do that. OK, that's great. Wonderful. All right, so with that, I think we'll go ahead and wrap up. Thank you, Stephanie, very much for your presentation. And I'm sure a lot of people will be watching this recording. OK, thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye.